Hi all, today is going to be a little bit longer video that I've been working on for quite a while. I really wanted to do this. I'm going to talk about how to pack for your equipment and for yourself on any length trip. The photography portion is pretty much going to be limited to a condensed version of what I have in my camera bag and what I'm going to take on a trip, in this case to Alaska. I'm not going to detail every single item in my bag. I'm going to keep it concise. I just want to show you what I take with me. The second part of the video is going to be how to pack for yourself. It doesn't matter if you're going for three days or three weeks or four weeks. You can get by by packing the same amount for any length. I'm going to show you how. Also, because this video is a little bit longer, I'm going to put some timestamps in the description. If you're just interested in the photography portion, you can jump to that. Or if you're a vacationer or a traveler like us, you can skip to that portion. I hope you're going to find this really useful. Let's get started. So to begin with, you might be wondering what qualifies me to talk about this subject. Well, my wife and I love to travel. We've been all over the United States and into parts of Canada. We've also been to Europe three times and covered countries like Iceland, the UK, France, Switzerland, Italy, Austria, Germany, the Netherlands, Czech Republic, Slovakia, and Hungary. These trips generally range from a week to three weeks. The very first time we went overseas to Europe, we overpacked. Now, we still didn't check any bags, but we had large roller suitcases that we took on the plane with us, plus an additional carry-on or a personal item. I'm going to get more into why you want to keep your luggage light after the photography portion. Okay, so let's get on to the photography portion. I usually do travel with my camera. Now, the exception to that might be like a family trip to Disney World. I don't feel like I need to be hauling an SLR through any Disney parks. If I was going to the Everglades or perhaps to the Space Coast, I might still consider carrying it, but it wouldn't be with me every single day. Now, what I put in my camera bag is a little bit opposed to what I put in my personal bags. With my camera, I generally bring everything I might need. There is a difference. Camera equipment, as you know, is expensive and it's not easy to find. I don't want to regret not bringing this lens or my microphone or my backup hard drive in case my memory cards get full. I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, let's jump into what's in my camera bag. Again, if you're here for the travel portion, not a photographer, go ahead and check the description for the timestamp where you can skip ahead to. I'm going to start with what I use for my camera bag. I spent a lot of time searching for what would work best for me. It's not just a matter of the size of the bag, it's how everything and all of my gear fit inside of the bag. Also, I wanted to make sure that my camera bag would work as my personal item on many flights. Now I realize that many professional photographers or, or those traveling with a 600mm prime lens or something like that might not get away with this. But you could easily swap your personal bag for your personal belongings and use your camera bag as your carry-on. As you can see here, my bag is about 13 inches wide, 17 inches tall, and about 8 inches deep. For most airlines, that would count as your personal bag. Now what I put inside my bag is going to depend on the trip. For this scenario, it's an Alaskan trip, so I'm really bringing most of my gear with me. I feel I need to be able to back up my pictures, have a gimbal with me, have a tripod with me, have a wildlife and a landscape lens, and anything I might need in the field because I can't easily go out and buy it. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the bag and take a look. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is my camera and my 24 to 105 lens is not in there. That's because I'm taking the video with it. Okay, let's look inside. In the main compartment of my bag, I have my 150 to 600 Sigma lens, my 1.4x teleconverter. My camera would be right there if I wasn't recording with it. I keep my 24 to 105 lens attached to my camera in my bag. It stays together quite nicely. I have a small pouch where I keep my small rig tool, as well as two extra camera batteries. I have my Pluto Trigger. This I like to carry with me in the event that I would run across the scenic thunderstorm, maybe with some mountains in the background or something like that. It can trigger my camera faster than I could myself and catch most lightning strikes. I'll do a video about this at a later time. And finally in the main compartment, I have my Vanguard travel tripod. See an earlier review I did on this tripod. For me, whatever I got had to fit inside my camera bag because attaching it to the outside, which I could do on this bag, eliminates the possibility of using this as a personal item. Okay, moving to the compartments inside the bag. First off, I have a case with a circular polarizing filter just in case I run into a scenario where I want to be able to see into the water when taking a photo. I don't use it very often. Also in here, I have a couple USB adapters, a cable, and a dual slot battery charger. I also like to throw a couple spare desiccant gel packs in my camera bag to keep things dry and keep moisture out. Moving on to the next compartment, I travel with three memory cards, all 128 gig. 
One of course is in the camera right now and the other two are in here. I like to have separate compartments for my empty and full cards so I know which is which. And in the last compartment I use a small pouch with some miscellaneous items. Here I have an extra tripod head, an Ellen wrench for my gimbal, some rubber bands, a hot shoe cover, and an extra clip for my strap. Okay, moving to the outside of the bag. For all intents and purposes, this bag has one main compartment on the outside. I keep a hat in here just in case. My camera strap. This is the rain cover that I covered in a previous video. It allows you to slide the cover completely over your camera and part of your tripod to keep things dry if you're shooting in the rain. And this is a folded up shower cap. These are really handy if you're just walking around and you just need some quick protection to slide over your camera. It fits a lot of different size cameras. Very useful. You can see here I also have a lens pen. And digging further, this is just a low angle adapter for my tripod in case I want to shoot really close to the ground. Now for the travel portion itself, I can actually put my gimbal head in this pouch if I choose to do so. Depending on the room I have in other bags, I would prefer to keep this in a different bag just because of the weight and I don't like it bouncing around near expensive equipment. Finally, I have my RAV Power File Hub and the hard drive to go with this. I keep these both in this main compartment when I'm going to and from my different locations. I don't leave them in there when I'm walking around during the day. They stay in the car or back at the hotel. This is especially important if you have a hard drive that's the old spinny disc type versus the solid state. They're much more susceptible to damage if you're bouncing them around. If you're enjoying this or other videos, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel so I can bring you more tips, tricks, and time savers. So as I mentioned at the start of the camera portion, I keep my camera bag to a personal bag size. This means I can put it under the seat in front of me and keep an eye on it. I don't want it jostling around in the overhead compartment. Okay, let's transition over from the camera side to the packing for yourself side. This part's going to be a little bit more detailed, but let me give you some background. So when I get into this, keep in mind that I'm referring to flying on planes, not road trips in your car. We live in the U.S. in Wisconsin, and we've done plenty of road trips. We've driven out to Yellowstone, we've driven down to Florida, we've driven to South and North Dakota. Earlier this year, we went to Mammoth Cave in Kentucky. I did a video on that one as well. When traveling by car, this doesn't really apply. We generally even take a cooler with us and a portable grill, and we do a lot of picnic lunches when traveling by car. Okay, enough of that. Back to airplanes. So our overseas travels are pretty much limited to Europe, Western and Central. One thing that I get very jealous of over there is their travel system. The train system is wonderful. While there are some reasons you might want to rent a car overseas, we took the train or some other sort of transportation all the time. We've never rented a vehicle, except for Iceland, which you really have to if you're going anywhere besides the tour routes. This matters for a couple of different reasons. First, backing up to the planes. We have never checked luggage going to our trips. On the way back, we have one or two times only because we bought something, like in Germany, a cuckoo clock, and we didn't have enough room for things on the plane. So one backpack with clothes got checked, and the cuckoo clock came on the plane with us. It's not a big deal going back home, because you're usually within range of your airport should something get delayed coming back. The very first time we went overseas, we did it with a tour group on a bus. I can't even describe how glad we were that we didn't check luggage. More than one couple lost baggage coming over. And guess what happens when you're leaving on a tour bus the first day of your trip? Yep. No luggage. I believe a couple of them had it shipped to them somewhere at a hotel down the road, but they're still without their luggage for the first week or so of the trip. It's really not worth risking. After our first trip, we were pretty comfortable with how to get around over there. That being by train. Some trains, there's plenty of room. Others can be pretty crowded. And let me tell you, you don't want to be carrying large roller type bags and check luggage onto the train system or whatever other transportation you might be taking. It's so easy to just throw in a backpack and carry your personal item with you on a train. You don't have to worry about lost luggage, everything's always in your possession, and you're not going to leave anything behind. Also, there were days where we would check out of a hotel and wanted to see some more of the cities. While some train stations have lockers, others didn't. So, throwing on our backpack and walking around, yes, it was a little uncomfortable, but it wasn't the end of the world. That's something we couldn't have done if we had giant roller-type suitcases with us. We'll never go back to traveling that way again. Trust me. All I can say is once you've experienced the freedom of traveling like that, there really isn't any going back for most people. Okay, let's jump to the portion where I show you actually how to pack these suitcases and what you need to bring. Now keep in mind, of course, this will vary a little bit by person to person with some different small items, but more generally speaking, this is what we do. All right, let's jump into it. Okay, so my personal size bag is my camera bag. What do I bring as my carry-on? Generally another personal size bag, Depending on the trip and the airline, I might bring something a little bit bigger, but it's always going to be a backpack. So how on earth can I fit enough in here for three weeks of vacation? It's a lot easier than you think. Let me show you. One thing you're going to really need to realize quickly is you don't need a different change of clothes for every single day of your trip. 
Generally, we bring three changes of clothes. That's often including the clothes we're wearing. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to lay out what I would take on a typical trip. We do almost everything in threes. Three pair of socks, three pair of underwear, three shirts, three pair of pants. If you're like me and like to wear shorts, a pair of convertible pants is also really handy. It's a two for one deal. I find that generally in the summer, I'll bring one pair of pants, one convertible pair of pants, and a pair of shorts. You're probably starting to see a trend. Three weeks in three changes of clothes, how do you get by with that? And no, we're not going to a laundromat. It's actually really simple and it does not take that much time. One of the keys is that you're not using cotton fabrics. You want to use a really lightweight synthetic type fabric for all the clothes you're packing. Or at the very least, you're going to want at least a blend of 50% cotton and 50% polyester. These are going to dry really quickly. What you're going to do either every night or maybe every other night is back at your hotel, do a really light load of laundry by hand in your sink or bathtub. I know it sounds dreadful. It's really not. All you need is the shampoo that most likely comes with your room, a clothesline, and a sink stopper. Now if you really have a big oops and you get into the mud or you spill on your clothes, yes, you might have to find a laundromat, but that can happen anytime anyways. You have to play for the most likely scenarios, not the incidentals. These last two shirts I put on here, these are the 50-50 blends. They actually do dry pretty quickly. So that's my base set of clothes. Now of course it's going to depend where you're traveling. When we go to Europe, this is my baseline. I also might bring a little bit nicer shirt just because you never know what kind of scenario you're going to get into. Here I have a long sleeve synthetic shirt with a collar. Paired with a pair of khaki pants that I bring, it'll pass for anything a little bit beyond casual attire. That's generally what I would wear to a sit down restaurant. Another thing that comes on almost all trips with us is some sort of a rain shell jacket. Like this one. While it's generally waterproof, after some time the rain does seem to start to soak through. I'll generally carry a disposable poncho with us as well just in case we get into some pouring rain. Between the coat and my long sleeve shirt, I'll generally stay warm enough in most situations. If we're traveling somewhere and I know it's gonna be cold, I'll generally bring something like a zip up fleece with me as well. And yes, it does all fit in the bag. I'll get to that in a moment. In fact, I'll add in the fleece just to show you. Again, I would probably only pack the fleece if I were going somewhere really cold like Iceland or maybe Scandinavia, somewhere like that. Remember, you can always choose to buy a sweatshirt where you're going as well. It also makes a nice souvenir and you could wear it back on the plane so you don't have to pack it in your bag. Okay, so for clothing, that's it. I generally travel with one pair of shoes. My wife sometimes likes to bring sandals as well. But what she'll do is wear the more bulky shoes and pack the sandals. It still doesn't take that much more room. You also don't need to bring your entire bathroom with you. The standard quart size bag for all your toiletries should be enough. Remember in most places, you can just go to the store and buy it when you get there. An entirely different video would be how we eat when we travel. We often go to grocery stores and do a lot of picnic lunches and dinners and have a couple nice evenings out just for a treat. You can save hundreds or thousands of dollars on a trip by being a little bit frugal like that. I do bring a few things like a shaver, ibuprofen, a toothbrush, contact lens supplies, but still it takes up less than half of a quart bag. And lastly of course was the clothesline and sink stopper I showed you earlier. Those take almost no room in the bag. Be sure to pack any phone chargers and cables that you might need as well. Most electronics I keep in my camera bag, but that's just me. Okay, so here's the pile of stuff. There's the bag. No way that's gonna fit, right? No problem and I'll probably have room for snacks. Not that I need them. By far the best thing we've ever found for traveling is a simple compression bag. Not the vacuum type, but the roll-up type. The only thing you have to be careful of with these is that you don't go overweight on your carry-on bags. But we generally don't run into that because we're not bringing a huge carry-on bag. Now I will note that everybody's different. They do make backpacks with rollers as well in case you might have back problems or things like that where you can't carry a backpack through an airport or wherever you're traveling. Now I won't sit here and bore you while I put every single thing into that bag but I do want to show you some of the basics. Sometimes we use one to two bags like this per person. Let me show you how we get started then I'll skip ahead to rolling it up. We'll set these aside for now. You want to keep these on top for airport security anyways. The key with these bags is layering things and keeping things nice and flat when you put them into the bags. As you can see, I'm trying to keep things as evenly distributed across the bag as possible. While these can hold quite a bit, you still don't want to overstuff the bags. It's better to use two of them. You can pick these up almost anywhere. I've seen them at Walmart, Target, Amazon. They're not hard to find and they're not that expensive. 
If you're worried about wrinkled clothing, generally don't be. We found that we've had very little wrinkling issues with the polyester type shirts that we bring. Plus, you can always just hang them up in the bathroom with a little bit of a steamy shower, and it's going to mostly come right out. If you're traveling with a partner, you might choose to put all your clothes in one bag, your partner's in the other, and put the coats and fleeces in a separate bag. Once you have your clothes in the bag, simply zip it up just like a Ziploc bag. Make sure it's nice and tight, and roll it up. Squeeze out all the air. This is where a helper comes in handy. You can actually have them sit on the bag to get the remainder of the air out. I'm going to take this off camera for just a second. There you go. All those clothes in one bag. Now it should be no problem whatsoever to fit those into my bag. Like I said, room to spare. And just for good measure, let me do the same with the coats just to prove that they fit in without a problem. I'll be right back. Now that one fit in pretty easily, but always make sure you're not stressing the zippers on your bag. Finally, with both those compression bags in, I can top it off with my extras. Easy to get to when going through security. Bag one. Bag two. This will go in the overhead compartment. This stays nice and close to me. Okay, let's talk about a few other things. These compression bags rarely fail, but it definitely doesn't hurt to bring a bigger one and a smaller one along with you as an extra, just in case. I believe we still have the first ones we've ever used, and those are over 10 years old. You'll know it's time to replace them if they stop holding air. It's a good idea to roll them up at least a couple days before your trip and see how they're holding up. If they start expanding, grab a different bag. I hope that portion was helpful for you. Now the washing portion, again, might seem like an inconvenience, and I can already hear some people saying, I don't want to waste time on my vacation doing laundry like this. To be honest, it takes maybe 10 minutes at the end of the evening. It's not a big deal at all. You get used to it really quick. We don't even think about it anymore. It's just something we do at the end of the day. We've done laundry for both of us and our two kids while on these trips, and still, it doesn't take that long. And does it really matter if you're wearing the same shirt on day one, and day four, and day nine in your pictures? Not at all. Nobody's looking at that. Some of the more discount airlines only allow a personal bag for free. You have to pay about $30 to $40 to take on a carry-on bag. For our next upcoming trip to Alaska, we purchased two separate bags. Also carry-ons, of course. So we're bringing a total of six bags for four people. Only reason we're doing this is we're doing something up there, maybe I'll do a video on this, where we need boots. That is not something I would normally carry on a trip, but we needed to do it for this. If it wasn't for that, I probably would have purchased one extra carry-on bag and we would have just used four personal items for this whole trip. Now the good thing is the personal items can be a little bit bigger than they used to. It used to be a personal item was basically a purse or a small camera bag or something like that. Now it actually is about the size of a small backpack. And as you saw, I can easily fit my clothes plus all my personal items in there. So I really encourage you to just think about trying this on your next trip. Even if it means two bags each, you can carry the largest personal size bag and the largest carry-on type bag that you can on the plane. Try to do this without checking luggage. It saves you at least an hour at most airports, and you don't have to worry about losing your luggage or it not showing up at your destination, especially if you're doing some sort of a tour or you need to move on within a day or two of getting to your destination. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions at all, feel free to put them in the comments section. Until next time, happy traveling. Mm -hmm.